Good morning, I hope you are well and enjoying today so far, whether you got up at 5am or you got up at 10am, I hope it's an awesome day for you. Um, my name's Mark, I'm one of the team here at Audacious Manchester, absolutely thrilled to be with you and um, we're dipping into Luke 10 today and we're going to continue our community series. So this is a story about two sisters who actually, Jesus visited the house, I mean that's pretty amazing. I, He's never visited my house in flesh. I don't know anybody here who has. So I think it's a pretty significant story and we're going to learn quite a bit from it. I'm going to read it. It's Luke 10 from verse 38 to 41. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered. You are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed. Indeed, only one. Ma Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. I think there's loads of stuff we can learn from that. Yes, there's been lots and lots said about working hard and focusing on Jesus. But one of the things I think is really important here that there was a bit of relational tension going on here. Martha was pretty upset that her sister wasn't helping her. It's interesting that in, you know, verse 39, it says, Mary sat there and listened. I wonder how long it was that Mary was sitting listening and Martha was still buzzing around the house, looking after guests, getting stuff ready, thinking about the next thing, doing all that kind of stuff. I wonder how long it was. I wonder what happened in Martha's head before she actually then had that, what I would say was a bit of an outburst. I mean, she tidies it up nicely and like, Lord, but it was a bit passive aggressive there. Why didn't she just talk to Mary in any way? But... I think there's a couple of things we can learn about relationships here that is really helpful. Um, the first thing is this. Um, what was going on in her head? I wonder if it started it somewhere pretty innocent, like, oh, I wish I could sit down and listen. This but there's heaps to do. I mean, wonder, wonder what stopped her from actually sitting down and listening. I wonder what was going on in her world that made her need to, to, to fix things and make it all pretty. I'm speaking to myself there because sometimes that is me. But then it must have trickled on. She Maybe she looked at Marth, uh, Mary and went, she never helps me. She's so lazy. Why is it always me who's working hard? Is she blind? Can't you see I'm run off my feet? Oh my goodness. And look at them socks she's left in the corner. Oh. And, and we see it just trickled down from something which was quite a normal so oh i wish i could have to sit down and listen which she could have and then all of a sudden a bit of a character assassination about her very own sister you know when our thought life behaves like that it's a cocktail for relational breakdown especially when dumb thoughts wrong thoughts are left to simmer and mature and in the slow cooker of offense it can break any relationship Here's a quote that I read from a book that really challenged me. It said this, and I want you to think about what you're thinking about other people. And when I say other people, it could be your wife, it could be your kids, it could be your mum, it could be your dad, it could be your friend, it could be your colleague at work, it could be that person you call a friend but you're not really friends, it could be your neighbours, it could be the person on the bus next to you, it could be the driver of the car next to you, it could be... The other parent at the school gate, it could be your boss. It could be anybody that you're going through that a breakdown with right now that you're thinking more about them than you are actually about talking to them. But listen to this quote. When we exchange reality for a mental creation, a mental assumption, we enter a counterfeit world. At that point, we exclude God from our lives because God does not exist outside of reality and truth. We wreck relationships by creating needless confusion and conflict in our mind. This is the one good thing that, may, that Martha did in this entire thing, was she interrupted her thought life and included Jesus in the conversation. 
albeit it wasn't in a nice way, it was more of, hey, sort this out, God way. It wasn't a, hey, I think I'm broken. It was more of a fix hair moment. When we include Jesus, when we ask Jesus into our thought life and to help us with our relationships, he's going to help. He gently corrected Martha. I don't know how he said Martha, Martha, but I imagine it wasn't, it wasn't in a scolding fashion. I imagine it was in a coaching manner, in a really helpful manner, like a soft Martha. With a pause, Martha. To get her to slow down. You see, that's what she did brilliantly. She did include Jesus in the conversation about relationships. And that's my encouragement for you today, is we want you to think about your relationships and include Jesus in them and, and help him work out what's going on in your head that is counterfeit, that is wrong, that is not on, on track with what he would think. Because when that trash comes out of your mind, then you can have an authentic, real relationship. There might be a hard conversation needed, but here's the truth. Jesus is there to help you in that, to give you the words, the courage, and the confidence. So, church, let's focus on including Jesus in our thoughts and in our relationships and building a brilliant community. We think you're brilliant, and we're asking that God blesses you and your family and your friendships and your relationships today. Amen. See you soon. Bye.